Market analysis now, Ryan Christensen is with Advisor Investments in Newton, Massachusetts. He's in the newsroom. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Brian. Fourth day in the row of up markets. What's moving the market today? Well, the job numbers that you guys already covered um, and went into de good depth on, it's clear that they weren't as close to expectations as investors really wanted. But uh, yes, estimates for unemployment remain at 3.6%. Uh, and really, the, the big number that we were looking at is the difference between job openings and people looking for jobs. There's still a huge skill gap there. And that all led to the increased likelihood that the Fed will be cutting rates um, in July. As a matter of fact, according to the futures for the Fed, that has already been fully priced into the market. And um, we've talked about that a ton with people from our, our firm. But one of the big pillars that we think hold up equity prices is lower interest rates. And so a big cut there is was uh, rewarded uh, for investors today. All right, so it's about interest rates, but it's also about trades and tariff. The president today having some things to say about the potential for tariffs on Mexico. What did that do for investors? Well, I mean, of course, it's always going to give investors a positive feeling when um, the president gives a clear path for a country that we do business with, a lot of business with, to get through um, a trade negotiation without adding tariffs. He basically said today, as long as Mexico is willing to buy more um, American agricultural goods, that he'll consider pushing down those tariffs. By the way, Mexico is the second biggest buyer of those goods already behind Canada. But anytime the, the president gives an out to a tariff from a tariff negotiation, I think investors are going to react po positively. And that's what I think we saw today. All right. Beyond Meat, big day. What drove that? Yeah, so, so far this year, 2019, Beyond Meat is definitely the winner of the IPO so far. They were up over 40%. Um, today, they had their first ever quarterly earnings report, and all it took for them to send their stock skyrocketing, and again, was positive, a rosy sales outlook for the rest of the year. Um, they uh, have an expectation of $210 million in sales. Uh, compare that to last year of $88 million, and you could see huge growth potential. They attributed that growth to uh, making more inroads with restaurants, as well as um, uh, premier grocery stores, as well as the continued thesis that's playing out that people are much more likely to be looking for meat alternatives. Uh, will the growth of 200% on a year-over-year -year basis continue? Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. But uh, if you're an investor in that company, you love what you're seeing so far. And if you're on the sidelines, you may be looking for a good time to get in. All right, Ryan, before we send you home to throw some alternative meat on the grill, yeah. what should we be looking at next week? Well, we get confirmation with the JOLTS report on Monday and we get some employment data. So we'll be looking at that. We also will be looking at CPI and PPI uh, inflation gauges. They may be a good indication of whether or not the Fed may uh, even uh, feel more confident in cutting rates uh, when they meet in July. Uh, if you put that to side and you look at um, uh, the lack of earnings that we get next week. And you could really see how news around China and, and Mexico, the tariff war that we've uh, gotten ourselves into with those two could be the, 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 the key stories that we look at next week. All right, Ryan Christensen, Advisor Investments. Have a good weekend, Ryan. Thanks, Brian.